guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. We finally made it to the point that everyone's been waiting for, the end of our crumb blocks. Yay! No, seriously, we are to the point now where all these blocks are made, and all I have to do is trim them up now, and then I'm done. I know these videos have gone up day after day, so you guys probably haven't, even if you've been stitching along with me, you probably don't have too many blocks that are ready for trimming. But as you do start sewing, if you choose to sew these blocks, you'll see that what seemed like forever when you were just starting out with these little bitty pieces in the beginning and you thought you would never make it to six and a half inches, you thought I was crazy. But once you started getting to the bigger chunks, these start to fly like that. Before you know it, you've got, you've already, your blocks are too big. You've gone over your size limit, whatever it is for me, six and a half inches. So today I'm going to show you how I trim these up. Now, my last step, a lot of these, let me move these out of the way. A lot of these I just took a chunk, no matter what the width, to put as my last round. Some blocks don't have any of what I've been calling solid fabric. There's seams all the way around. And then others, most of them have just one. Some of them have a couple, but... I like to have larger pieces on the outside, so if I were to choose to sew two blocks together, I wouldn't have as many seams at the outer edge as I might have, like all these different seams on the inside. I try to avoid having too many on the last outer edge, so if I do choose to stitch two of these together, I still won't have tons of extra seams. It gives me a little bit extra space. Maybe I might want to just quilt in the ditch where the two blocks join instead of quilting the entire quilt. But that's a personal preference. And as you can see with mine, I did not follow that rule because, you know, it's not a rule. I just sometimes get tired of making blocks and I just want to add a big chunk to the outside and get it finished off. But enough chatter, let's get to cutting. So after I made these last rounds of blocks, I gave them a good press, and then I like to also hit mine with steam, make them nice and flat so that they're easy to cut. As I said, I am using six and a half inch blocks for mine. So I just, I look at it, this block is really simple. There's not too many options. It's not much bigger than the six and a half inches. So I kind of just center it up and then I trim it off. If you have one of those rotating mats, now would be a good time to use them. As a matter of fact, I have one of those. See, I have a spinning mat. I should probably listen to my own advice sometimes. But just in case you don't have one, let me do this one first without rotating at all. So I keep it in one place, keep my hand on it. If you have one of those safety gloves that you prefer to use so you don't accidentally cut yourself, now's a good time to have it. I trimmed up one side, then I'll trim up the other. And then just like any time we were trimming blocks in the past, I grab this corner because the two sides are both trimmed. I line my square back up into this corner. And then I trim the last two sides. And there you go. Simple as can be, six and a half inch square. Now you might notice that I've got a little, my favorite word, I guess, smidgen of fabric left here. I have two pieces. These are going to get eaten up into a seam allowance. I'm not going to stress over it. After I stitch, depending on how I use this block, when I stitch the next piece of fabric to it, if I notice there's an issue, I can always go back through here and trim out this extra bit of seam allowance. But for now, I'm just going to leave it because it's not hurting anyone right now. You can see how new this mat is. I think I've probably only used it once. So here's a bit of a, a funky shape. You may have noticed as I'm putting my blocks together, I may not be squaring them up so that's an exact perfect square, but I do like to, as I'm adding pieces, I like to try to keep my edges in a straight line. Whether it goes at an angle or not, it doesn't matter. I just kind of like, I don't do big wonky like that. I'd rather save it to the end to make it wonky then. But as you can see, this is more of a, what, a parallelogram or something? It's an off shape. 
So I just decide, I pick a spot. Now you can see up here, if I put my, my ruler down in this section, oh look, these come apart. Told you I never use it. So if I put my ruler to kind of stay close to the edge down here, I have this whole section right here. This piece will be completely cut off and up here this piece of fabric will be cut off too. So if these two were really favorite fabrics and I wanted to make sure they were in my block, I may decide to keep my ruler back up here. And then I have to take into consideration that there's a seam right here a half inch away from the edge. So it's basically just about moving your ruler around and getting it into a position that I try to cut back on the seams along the edge so there's not extra seams in the seam allowance. I just try to split the difference between not being too close to this seam. I'm really sorry about that light. There we go. I have the seam right here that's close to the edge and then I have the seam right here. So I just try to make them so they're both about a half inch and I just move my ruler around so it fits onto my block in a way that'll work. Now, if I was a true crumb blocker, and I may save this and I may not, but as I trim this piece off, this can now go back into my bucket if I would like for crumbs, and I can add, I can have this as a starting spot for my next block. Or I might just decide to take these two pieces of fabric here and put them in for my ticker tape collection, which for me, that's probably where they'll go. So then I just keep spinning my block around This rotating mat does make it much easier so you're not constantly picking it up and moving it and that way you don't have to worry about your ruler shifting. And there's my next block. Now if you have blocks, if you made your blocks even larger than your, your my intended side, we're just gonna go with the six and a half. If I made my blocks maybe seven and a half, I might be able to decide that I can put my, my ruler more on a diamond diagonal shape instead of going right along with my squares. So for now, this one, I can, because I have this nice large piece down here, I can decide to wiggle it around to see where I can get the most wonkiness out of it. And that way, my edge piece here won't be a full, straight-on piece of fabric. Now, it's going to give me some... It's going to give me some seams close to my edge, but I am okay with that. If I can choose not to do it, then I will. But if it works for the block for it to stay near the edge like that, then it's okay. See, now that's a perfect spot to start out for some people with crumbs. You can leave it like this, or if you want, you can chop it up and you have a couple pieces. This piece here... It has that nice little chunk at the end. I can use this whole section, but I don't, like I said, I don't really care much for using the smaller pieces. So maybe I might want to take this and then just cut off the seam allowance. So as I'm doing this, I can have a pile for the garbage. I can have a, put this right back into my, um, my crumb block bucket. And then I can have a section where I want to put pieces in my ticker tape. That way I'm only touching these scraps once and it's gonna save me time and I'm not gonna have to go, this could be sitting on the side of my cutting table for weeks and then all of a sudden I wanna work again and I'll have to sort through that mess and clean it up. If I only touch it once, then everything's done. So there's my block, it's just a little bit wonkier. It's gonna add a little bit of dimension to my quilt. Now another thing you could have been doing when you're making these blocks, you could have decided that you want to do a color theory or a rainbow style quilt. You could Each block can only be one color, like this could have been all blues. And then I could have another group of blocks where I'm only working with my red scraps. Now my stash does not, my stash doesn't work like that. I have a lot of novelty prints like this. So maybe in the future I could possibly do a quilt like that. But for this one, my scraps, 
allow me to just have some fun novelty ones. Maybe I'll cut this one a little bit wonky too. Here's that strip that I added on with all the different fabrics to make it grow quicker. But this is the simplest part of making these blocks, I think, because you're just trimming them up. You've already made them as large as they need. You just need to make sure that as you're cutting it that there's always fabric everywhere underneath your ruler and you're at the right size. So now this one's more of what a lot of people consider to be a crumb block. This has, other than this large piece, there's lots of little pieces going on here. Lots of tiny bits, little pops of color, small, small pieces. So maybe your block looks like that now. Or maybe you decided to make yours more like mine and you just got big chunks. Definitely makes it easy for squaring them up afterwards because you can really avoid a lot of the seams along the edge if your pieces are larger. Boy, this is really nice. I'm going to have to keep this mat out more often instead of having it tucked away in a drawer. There you go. Another start for another crumb block. So that's all there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and finish trimming these, the rest of my blocks up. And for now, we're going to call that the end for this part of the series. But please come back next week. And on Friday, I'm going to show you how I start to put these together and make these a usable item. Now, of course, I have no problem making these blocks and letting them sit in a bucket for years. But I know whenever I want to do, whenever I make a quick project or I want to just have a little bit more controlled than playing with the scraps, then I can pull these blocks out and I can make a table runner or a tote bag or I can make a hot pad or a coaster out of these. The things you can make with these are only limited by what your imagination is, and it's really easy to go online and see what other people are making with their crumb blocks. But go ahead and come back on next Friday if you like, and we'll see how they look when I start putting them together in projects. Thanks for hanging out with me this weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye.